All right, guys, those of you who uh, are quite regular at watching our videos, you'll have seen we did a comparison between the RS500 and the three-door. So we thought we'd do one between the Escort and the, and the Sierra. So we were lucky enough to have the Escort in the workshop anyway, and you'll have seen we've done a lot of work on this one. So we've put them next to each other, and we're going to hopefully Paul's going to talk us through how they started the Cosworth journey with this one and how they finished with this one, and obviously how they packaged the four-wheel drive system or an updated version of, a, of, of that into a four-wheel drive system and put it into an Escort. So I'll pass you over to Paul and he can... Uh, Blame me for everything that's Tell wrong. us how it happened. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, before we start, we're not going to get into the absolute in-depth of every nut, bolt and washer. This is basically going to be just an overview of how this evolved into that, really. So don't start saying you never mentioned the wiper blades go the other way on an <laughs> Escort. It's not meant to be that. So obviously, uh, everybody knows the two-wheel drive Sapphire uh, three-door Cosy was the first one. Then we Ford evolved into the four-door Sapphire Cosy. Then they went on to a four-wheel drive Sapphire, which was um, quite a, a... I don't know whether it was a desirable thing or not, really. I don't really know why Ford made the four-wheel drive Sapphire. I can only assume it was rally-based, as everything was with Ford at that time. Everything then was the rally era. Um, so I'm presuming that's why they built the four-wheel drive Sapphire. And then people, well, where, where did the Escort come from? Well, realistically, the Sierra program was finishing. No, they obviously had plans to finish the Sierra program. The, all the new range of Ford Escorts was coming out, the, the new Mark V RS2000s, blah, blah, blah. So obviously the Escort was coming forward and the Sierras were disappearing. But Ford still wanted to go rallying. Well, they knew they'd never win nothing with a front-wheel drive car that was anything to shout about so i can only we assume that then obviously the guys at ford had said well how do we keep winning rallies they'd already developed the four-wheel drive system they'd already developed the cosworth look at that let's put all that lot into a ford escort and thankfully for all those fans that's what came out so we'll try our best to tell you the the major differences of the escort cosworth to a standard Sierra Cosworth uh, and against the standard Mark V Escort. So where do we start? I think the body shell, really. Yeah. Um, obviously, if um, Steve grabs the camera, we'll have to zoom in on a lot of the differences with the Escort to sort of show you how special this was because the body shell was actually built by a company called Carmen and they were hand-built. They were not a major production shell. They were all individually hand-built. And basically, all the running, all the sorry, the underside of the Escort Cosy is exactly the same as a four before Sapphire Cosworth. All they did was shorten the wheelbase very slightly to make it fit the outer dimensions of the Ford Escort. Um, they actually did cheat a little bit because they had to push them out a little bit wider than the standard Escort, but that's what they did. So, if Steve grabs the camera and comes in closer, a lot of people won't notice. But you can actually see, if you get up close, you can see a join there. And that join there is basically because that inner wing, all the chassis rails, all the floor pans, is Sapphire 4 before Cosworth. Everything's exactly the same. They basically just chopped it, got the Mark V Escort body shell, and joined the two together. So looking at that, I'm pretty certain that that bit there in a Mark V Escort is the inner wing. Yes. It carries through to about uh, here. Exactly. And then it stops and you have nothing here. It's just plastic wheel arch. Absolutely, exactly. Very clever how they did it because obviously the bulkhead, the lower part of the bulkhead, again, is Sierra 4 before Cosworth. And where it joins up here, that's where it then joins in at the spot wells there. They've interfaced again, the Escort, and the Sierra bulkhead. Very, very cleverly done because at first glance, as we say, you would never actually notice it. Probably took me quite a while of owning escorts before I thought one day, well, you can see that where they've joined the two. The boot floor is a completely unique boot floor to the escort Cosworth. The chassis rails are sapphire Cosworth, but cut shorter. And then they had to put a unique boot floor in because of the big plastic fuel tank that goes up underneath in between the chassis wheels on the Escort Cosworth. So instead of your, your, your standard traditional spare wheel well dropping down and your spare wheel sits in it, they didn't have the room for that. So they made 
the boot floor flat when they put with a hump that way and then obviously they didn't have enough room so that's where you get your space saver wheel on an escort cosworth one because the wheel sits on top of the boot floor rather than in it the wheelbase was shortened i can't remember exactly what it was i, I didn't know the measurements off top of my head years ago when i had a lot to do with escorts but over the last 10 15 years it's predominantly been as you probably know the sierra three door and the 500 that we do with um so all these things have gone out of my old tiny brain i can't can't keep too much info you know i'm guessing I'm, I'm guessing that'll have been shortened where the rear of the floor comes up to where the rear seats are absolutely correct the basically i'm absolutely sure you know 22 mil comes to mind i know it wasn't a lot because i'd built quite a few rear wheel drive escort cosworth years ago when i was a breaker i used to strip the escort cosworth and then i'd put the two wheel drive cosy engine gearbox in an escort cosworth just for a bit of a fun track car really and i remember i used to have to have the prop shaft shortened and I used to send it away, they'd shorten it, re um, weld it back together and balance it for me. And I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm sure 22 mil comes to mind. It wasn't a huge amount, but as Steve quite rightly said, it was taken off where the floor finished and came up for the back seat. That's where they took that piece of floor out, the easiest place to do it to shorten the wheelbase. Uh, obviously, the, 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 sh the wings, the outer wings are flared because there's no way you would get the wide track of a four-wheel drive sierra in a standard um body shell so which was a bit of a bonus because obviously we're now left with that iconic flared front and rear wheel arches that you only get on the escort cars with no other escort has it which makes them look fat and mean as we would say so you get the the flared arches here and same on the front and again um only the escort cars with had that you got the nice big fat chunky side skirts to bring the bodywork out and which gives the impression the door sat right in now i've seen the first when they were designing these and this is the best one out of all of them because some of them are horrendous <laughs> <laughs> what escorts you mean <laughs> yeah some of the um like the clear designs that they did oh I'll yeah throw some yeah. pictures up but some of them look terrible yeah but th this is just what a fantastic project and i yeah. think this is where we believe the ford lovers that this was the last of the real you know what let's do it a ford you know they would sort of we need to do something let's build it and they would build something as radical as this and i don't think a lot of people realize how radical this car is the lens they went to to make this car happen to join two body shells together I, don't, I can't think of any other manufacturer that's done it can you steve no not off the top of my head you know, most of the time audi quattro and stuff like that from what i believe they went out and built a purpose a, built a purpose car, shell yeah effectively joining one to the other that's right so this is what people do nowadays you see a lot of people getting a, a, a an old body shell mustang or 67 mustang or whatever it is and then they put it on the the new s550 chassis and make a what do they call the column um, retro modernness and don't that matter you know these names for them but ford did this with this car so regards all the mechanicals, the mechanicals on this are exactly the same as a Sierra um, 4 before Cosworth. So you've obviously got a four-wheel drive system, which means you've got the bigger cast sump with the front differential bolts to the sump. And then your drive shafts come out either side. You have the real big aluminium cross member, same as on the Sapphire. But the only noticeable change is really to the Escort Cosworth over the Sapphire was the bigger turbo. Obviously, the standard 4x4 Sapphire had the standard T3 turbo, as all the Cosworth range did. But the um, the big turbo Escort Cosworth, as it was named, because it had a bigger turbo, has the T34 on it. Now, don't quote me on figures. I can't really remember what the difference was. But it made them um, quite a bit more lively on the road once you get them wound up. The Escort Cosworth, this has got a, an aluminium front mount intercooling, so not the standard production one, but the, the intercooler was made bigger obviously to cope with the extra boost, et cetera. Um, but again, standard gearbox, standard diff, standard suspension layout, as same as the, as the 4x4 Sapphire Cosi. So realistically, other than the turbo and a few bits and pieces, you had a 4x4 Saf Cosi on an Escort body shell. So best of both worlds, as some people would say. Um, so, so how much similarity is there to the three door then? Because obviously the engine's different. Nothing really, because obviously the 4 before engine was a completely reworked engine. It had the stronger 
200 block, which obviously that evolved from the RS500 205 thicker wall block. So it's got a different block, a different cylinder head, different pistons. <sighs> what else is there? We've touched on the turbo, the inlet manifold is slightly different. I don't think there was any performance enhancing to the it's inlet manifold. Exhaust manifold. Just smoothed it off. Good one, Steve. Yeah, the exhaust manifold. On the two wheel drive cars, um, the exhaust manifold was a real big sweeping manifold that used to come out the head, sweep down, come round back on itself and bolted to the side of the turbo and it came in two pieces. On the four wheel drive, I think because of lack of room because of the diff, they brought a smaller basically out, straight out and then the turbo bolted onto the manifold from the top. So apparently you can get better torque out of an engine if you use the four wheel drive manifold. But if you want horsepower, you see all the big power escort cozies either converted to a tubular manifold or they went onto the two wheel drive manifold. So although it looks exactly the same when you lift the bonnet, quite a different engine really. Developed quite well was the four before engine. A lot more reliable, I think. Lasted, tended to last a lot longer and could take a bit more stick. But everything else, as we said, is exactly the same. Um, engine management. Big Turbo had uh, the P8 ECU, which was quite a, quite a much more advanced ECU, really. If you wanted anti-lag and such like, you had to go on to the, the P8 ECU. As the three-door and the early Sapphire had what we call the Level 1, easily identified by the mixture screw on the, side, on the front face of the ECU, a real small yellow one on the Level 1s. The Sapphire Cozies then went on to a level six, which was a bigger screw for the um, mixture. And that was a gray. And then they went on to the level eight, which was very similar to the PA. Now I'm trying to think if the level eight had the screw adjuster. Yes, it did. It's only the PA that doesn't have the adjuster on it. But the easy way to tell the level eight is the lugs that stick on the side of the ECU where it screws in on the on the earlier cars, they deleted that because they put the ECU under the dashboard on the later 4 before Sapphire Cosies with the level 8 in and on the P8 again, the ECU has got no mounting lugs on it but it also doesn't have a mixture screw. You can't adjust the mixture on a, on a P8 ECU. Quite advanced was that ECU and at the time I remember when I was breaking these cars, everybody wanted the P8 ECU. It was the, you know, the bee's knees really. If you wanted to an anti-lag and Another, um, I'm trying to think now what they called it, um, wasted spark and everything. It was easier to do it on the level eight and the P8 ECUs. So everyone obviously gives credit to Cosworth for these, but from what you were saying, it was actually Carmen who were responsible, and without them, this would have never come about. No, I mean I don't know whether Ford would have done it themselves. I think because Ford were quite clever that to stop disruption to the the standard production lines, as it were. To build a one-off vehicle like this would have meant building a completely new one-off assembly line and Ford, I can only assume, didn't see that, you know, that that was really worthwhile. So they outsourced the body shell to Carmen. Like Ford are known for doing the RS500, yeah. they outsourced the RS500 to Tickford. Um, I think they learned the lesson because if, if I'm right in thinking that the Mark 1 Focus RS body shell was made at Ford and they reckon that's why they lost so much money on them mm. cars because it had to be a sort of a different production system because the car was so varied from the standard focus as this car didn't really match the assembly processes for the 4 before Cosworth and it certainly didn't match the, the assembly processes for the standard Mark V Escort, whether it be an RS2000 or, or a 1300. It was so completely different, as you can imagine, you, you couldn't really throw them down the same assembly line. I mean... And I'm, again, I'm not really sure how they did it. The shells must have been brought in and they must have had an assembly line somewhere to build these cars. But the brakes and everything on the 4 before Cosy are slightly different. What they actually did was sort of downgraded the front brakes for some reason and then upgraded the rear. So on your four, on your two-wheel drive Cosworth, the Sapphire and the three-door, you've got a four-pot front caliper with a, a vented disc. But on the rear... You've got a solid disc, not vented, with um, a, a single piston caliper. On the four before Cosies, you've gone the other way. You've got a, a single piston front caliper on sliders with 
um, the same size disc, a sort of Buddha vented disc, but on the rear, the upgraded, same caliper, but made wider because obviously they put a, a vented disc on the rear. So it was a, I don't know, obviously they just found it properly a better mm. brake balance because of the weight distribution on the car, maybe. So they slightly, I would say, downgraded the front. If you, you know, you, everybody who tunes cars wants to put a four pot caliper, four pot, four piston caliper on the front. Not a single piston, so they were different. I'm trying to think what else there was earlier. Oh, the diff. The diffs on the four before, they actually went from a seven and a half inch diff on the early sapphires and the early three doors. On the four befores, they actually went to a smaller diff on the rear. They went down to a seven inch diff on the rear. Again, there'll be reasons why. I don't know why Ford have done that, but obviously different ratios as well. Um, so they're slightly different. A lot of these things are interchangeable. We've seen over years, as I said, a lot of um, Escort cars with converted to rear-wheel drive, and we've seen three doors converted to four-wheel drive. Obviously, that's frowned upon now. Everybody wants, you know, the purists wants, want cars as they left the factory, and certainly with a three-door, it would, it would drastically affect its value. If it was a four-wheel drive, nobody would want that. But the only thing you had to do to put the the whole power plant and drivetrain out of a four before sapphire into a three door we simply put two little notches in the front chassis rails where the front drive shafts run to the wheels if you went on full suspension travel the drive shaft would hit the the chassis so you just simply cut two notches out of the chassis rail weld it up and the four wheel drive gear everything out of that bolt straight in that and everything out of that well, straight into that, the only difference on the Escort is the prop shaft difference, which we spoke about. Other than that, everything is completely and utterly interchangeable. And you even get a cat if you buy an Escort <laughs> cause with look. Um, so looking around this, it looks like the only panel that's got anything similar to an Escort is maybe the doors and the roof. Everything exactly else that. looks completely uh, one-off. Absolutely, exactly that. The doors, this, the roof. Even the boot looks different, isn't it? It's got the holes pre-drilled, I think, for the spoilers. Yeah, if I, if I remember correctly, I think the Mark V, the Mark V, oh, that's right, the tailgate is the same. Yep. Obviously, it's got the captive nuts in for the spoilers. Um, I'll just kill that cat. Come here. Go away. Um, yeah, so the, the roof, the tailgate and the doors, obviously the wings, all the front panels, everything's different, bumpers, spoilers. The bonnet's the same bonnet as a Mark V Escort, but obviously with the pressed in for the bonnet vents, and she's taking no notice of me whatsoever. <laughs> um, interior, obviously standard Mark V um, dash sort of to look at, but the dashboard has what we call the banana pod that houses the three extra gauges. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, a different clocks went to the uh, the clocks with the boost gauge, the oil pressure gauge, and I can't remember the last one, volt gauge in the centre. Centre console slightly different, obviously, because it was made to fit the gearbox tunnel for the four-wheel drive transmission. Door panels were basically the same, similar, very similar to a standard Mark V. Um, the seats were obviously um, what they call a hexagon Recaro seat, a special seat for the Escort Cosworth, but you could get it in leather as well. Had rear headrests, and I think that's probably about it, really. Center console's obviously raised up, isn't it? Completely? Yeah, I mentioned that, didn't I? It, yeah. made, it had to be raised up because of the bigger gearbox yeah. tunnel, and then obviously it made wider as well, so they're all the center console. Interestingly enough, the back half of the center console from the electric window switches back is a standard Sapphire 4 before, and it's been cut yeah. You can clearly see where they've just cut it because obviously it was a one-piece yeah. plastic mould in, in the sapphire, but because they wanted to use what they'd already got, they just cut it in half and then made the unique centre console that slot over the top of that and then they put the window switches in to hide the joint. So there we so are. So this is almost a mismatch of other pieces, whereas the Sierra was more one-off than yeah the think. sierra every part on the sierra that was cosworth was unique because everything on on the escort seems to have been big stolen and borrowed from yeah. ford's parts bins and you know everything else it still retains the same sort of size sunroof as all the cosy ranges yeah. done all the bumpers and spoilers obviously unique um because you saw people back in the day trying to put an escort cosworth bumper and grill 
on a Mark V RS2000 when it just simply wouldn't fit. Uh, you also saw people trying to put the Mark V wings mm -hmm. um, onto a standard Mark V Escort. Well, they didn't fit because the wheel doesn't fit in the middle of the wheel yeah. arch on a, on a standard Mark V Escort. If I remember correctly, the wheels are a lot further forward. The wheels get, are further forward on the on the, on the Escort yeah, Cosworth. On the Cosworth yeah. yeah. So when you see people putting Escort Cosy wings on a Mark V Escort, the wing almost touches yeah. the back of the wheel. There was no gap because the wing's wider at the back because the wheels are further forward. Yeah, that's one of the big giveaways on a replica, really, is that the distance between the, the, the front half of the back of the wheel arch and where the grill is on a replica is a lot smaller. So that's they right. Actually, they've moved the wheel arch back on the wing on the replica panels as opposed to the genuine. The only other thing I remember with escorts, absolute nightmare to work on them. You had no room. The engine was so close to the front panel on an escort cause with compared to the Sierras and one thing that you can see there, this... What have we got there? Three, four inches yeah. between the front panel and the, and the cam cover as here. You've got seven or eight inches, yeah. so twice as much room. Because this bit here looks all like standard Escort. That, that is, yeah, that, 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 that's all standard Escort. I think and below modified. that, is it slightly different, the cross member? They modified it here as well. They put different headlight panels in, if you were, but the, right. the landing panel's the same. But yeah. yeah, the front cross member obviously is a big cross member. Um, if I can, am I correct? No, no, it's got the Sierra front cross member That's in it. it. Yeah, yeah, Betw yeah, because it, it's just the top half the change. Yeah, my memory's coming back to me now. Yeah, so it is a, a cut and shut, then, isn't it? Really, it's me, yeah, it's yeah. exactly what it is. It's yeah. a cut and shut car, but done by Ford Motor Company, so not frowned upon. Yeah, but a great car. We like we love this car, don't we? Steve? Yeah, we do, this yeah. car came in to be sold, yeah. and we don't uh, want it to go. Yeah, I think me and Steve were going to start having fisticuffs <laughs> over it at one point because he liked it, I liked it. And to be quite honest, if it hadn't sold, I think one of us would have ended up buying it. I think they're just a special car, aren't yeah, they? they? Because are. of what they, yeah. what, what they made out of it. And then obviously, the later Escort Cosworth, they went on to the, what we call the small turbo model. Less uh, desirable. When you lift yeah. the bonnet, it just didn't quite look right. There was nothing about it right, really. The only good thing with the small turbo, because exactly as it is what it says it is, the management system was was more refined for daily driving. Yeah. Um, smaller turbo, so you didn't have the lag. So actually, as a round-town driving car, they drive really, really nice. But they just had no excitement about them. You put your foot down, you know, is that it? And they didn't look nice to change the rocker cover, which was a bad mistake. That, to me... That rocker cover, whether it be the red for the two-wheel drive Cosies, they went on to green for the um, unleaded 4x4 sapphires. Then they went to blue for the Escort Cosy. Either way, it was exactly the same rocker cover. And it just looked fabulous. It's the iconic mm -hmm. Cosworth rocker cover. And then they went to this horrible, well, it's just terrible rocker cover. I think cover. it was, when you lift the bonnet, it looks more modern of the town. Yeah. Yeah, and I, unfortunately, I mean, we, we can't moan too much because I think Ford really were pushed down that route with the small turbo escort to meet emissions, mm. the European emission laws. And it was the only way they could do it was to change the whole electronics of the car, um, completely different ECU, completely different wiring. Uh, th I think that was the generation of the start of the, we've got a sensor on the wiper blades, we've got yeah. a sensor on the washer bottle. Yeah, it was just... The, the, the what we live with today you know you buy a modern car and all you do is dread the ecu like pinging on every five minutes well the small turbo escort was i think the beginning of that era so can you put that rocker cover on a small turbo car or you can believe it you or can, not. Yeah. people say you can't but there's less bolts yeah but they still do fit you yeah. can put them on yeah. so a few people did put that rocker cover onto the small turbo um, but it meant changing the timing belt cover, uh, uh, quite a bit of stuff to swap it over. And because you could, you, you had some bolt holes, obviously that had no bolts in. Um, but, it, but it could be done indefinitely. Yeah, one of the things that probably surprised me the most is that on the small turbo, obviously they put the fuel flap in there, which must have been a whole new set of tooling for that quarter panel. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, I think that by the time they got to the small turbo, they'd realised the corrosion issue. Because yeah. the Escort Cosy, and same with all the Mark V Escorts, used to corrode badly around the fuel filler. And I think Ford obviously had seen that and thought, oh, we need to stop this. So they completely redesigned the fuel filler area and went to the the bigger plastic flap, which arguably looks better or worse, depends what you like. 
they went to the small mirrors. The, S, the large turbo had the large mirrors. The, the small turbo S car had a small, a lot more rounded little mirror. So they were quite easily identifiable just from the outside by the mirrors and the flap. You, you know, if you had a private player on it, you could sort of tell by them, really. But I, th I think that's sort of it, really, isn't it, to cover? Yeah, I mean... Without going into the, the, every yeah, single nut and cranny. The measure out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's it, really. But, but very, very similar, but miles apart. Yeah. You know, and you sort of contradict what you say, don't yeah. you, about them being very similar. But Yeah. The only thing, one last thing that you said you'd built a few of these in rear wheel drive. Yeah. So when you were sat inside it, regardless of what body shell it was in, did it drive exactly the same once converted to rear wheel drive? No, this is the, the, the thing that, that shocked me when I built my first one. I thought, oh, great, I'm going to have a car that looks as cool. Because it does look, the Escort Cosy is a beautiful looking car. It's got that, just that iconic 80s lowered, big arches, loads of spoilers, loads of vents. Look fantastic, but it bored me to death being four wheel drive. I just found it. So I thought, I'll build one rear wheel drive and I'll be able to go sideways on every roundabout. Unbelievably difficult to get an Escort Cosy sideways. You know, you just assumed it would be exactly the same yeah. as a three door or a two wheel drive sap. Well, they weren't. That short wheelbase made a completely different, a different approach to how you had to drive. You had to make it go sideways as the three on the sapphire would go sideways for fun. I think there's many people that have ended up backwards in an edge back in a, <laughs> without intending on doing it as the escort. You really had to drive it hard. So quite a, quite a fabulous car really as a rear wheel drive car because you, you lost all that drag from the four wheel drive system. Um, so it made them a little bit quicker, the uplift a little bit better, um, obviously a lot lighter. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. I loved mine. I built three, I think. And the last one I built, I put a full cage in it, quite a high spec car, maybe about 440 horsepower. And yeah, obviously you could make it go sideways, but uh, yeah, quite an amazing car. Really. A real shame they never did do yeah. an option where you could buy a two-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive. Um, Escort Cosworth, really. I think most people would have probably gone for If you'd have driven it, I think most people would have gone for the two-wheel drive. And I think the other thing with the Escort is obviously you could run, because of the flared arches on the back, obviously all man had 18-inch wheels on, so you were a hell of a lot bigger wheel than on a on a Sapphire Cosy, so that obviously yeah. helped its grip to stop it going sideways. But fabulous, fabulous fun. Great, great car to have as a, as a rear-wheel drive conversion. And as we touched on, it was just quick, simple of everything bolted in. You, know, you could just basically undo your turret tops there, undo your four bolts on your cross member, undo your gearbox mounts, your back out, and just drop the whole lot out, slide that lot over, bolt it straight in, all the same holes, everything lined up, uh, shorten your prop shaft, and away you went. It was, it was as simple as that, so... I remember when I was braking, I think most people who used to buy the shells off me, so we used to break cars really that shouldn't have been yeah. broken. You know, there was nothing wrong with them. It was just the demand was there for the parts. So you would pull them to bits. And the amount of people who built rear wheel drive escort cosies, you know, would buy the shell off me and go and buy a, the good old days when you could buy a two wheel drive cosy for two and a half thousand quid that had a bit rough on arches and door bottoms hanging out. You could buy a Escort Cosy body shell off me for like three and a half grand. Yeah. Uh, the world build what looked like a modern car for not a great deal of money. Though. Yeah, you could actually build a, an Escort Cosworth, you know, a two or, a, or a two wheel drive or four if, if you wanted to remain four wheel drive. I used to buy three doors for like two and a half grand, three grand to break. Sapphire Cosies, I used to have them racked up outside at two, two and a half grand. But Escort Cosies, if you wanted to buy them, you'd have to pay eight grand yeah. for an Escort to break it. Um, so yeah, there was a lot, a lot of a lot of cars built onto old shells, which obviously today now you have to be really, really careful because a lot of these cars were ex rally cars. Because um, obviously you could buy, which we haven't touched on, you could buy a motorsport version of an mm. Escort Cosworth. So the idea behind the motorsport version, it came with no sunroof, had a solid roof, didn't have the Recaro seats in it. It had just some like, looks like off your grandma's settee. <laughs> it had no electric windows, didn't have a stereo. 
no opening rear windows. It was, it was basically um, a 909 Motorsport Escort Cosworth. All the running gear was in it. Everything was exactly the same, but all the fancy gadgets had Did gone. Did they come with a front splitter? Well, yeah, no, no, they came with it. They came with it. But I tell you what, they did come with the early ones. They actually had the RS500 fog light grills in the Escort Cosy because yeah. I remember seeing the original, the poster that, of the launch of the Escort Cosy had the 500 grills in it. And and what we forget is Ford were working on this in 1990. The first Escort Cosy with prototypes were built and rallied mm -hmm. in 1990 to test the program. And, and everybody loved it, said it was a great rally car, which... It's exactly really what that was built for. It was supposed to be a rally car and it did, it, it won a lot, didn't it? The Monte Carlo, yeah. then obviously you could buy the Monte Escort Cosy. But back to the motorsport one, I actually had one in this colour, Mallard Green. I bought it. It didn't bother me that it didn't have all the gadgets on it because all the wiring was there. So you pull the blank out of the centre console where the electric window switches are, go to your local scrapyard, buy the switches, <laughs> just plugged them in, the wires were there. The... the Obviously, the motors were in for the wind for the uh, electric windows because it had windies. But again, you get them out of a standard Mark V Escort from a scrapyard for five or each. Yeah. Drill some rivets out, put them in. Your electric windows worked, and I remember. I think I told you. This yeah, the back windows. Chem, I went to Ford and I bought the back glass, all the rubbers, all the brackets, every screw clip, the caps, everything, brand new from Ford, and oh, I was right. like. I think you said you were that excited when you went to look at it, you got completely overlooked, it had no opening back windows. Yeah, there was loads of things <laughs> I didn't notice. But I bought all that from Ford and it was cheap as chips, you know, maybe 300 quid for everything to convert it to opening rear windows. But yeah, Steve was right, I remember driving home and thinking, I never noticed it didn't have rear headrests in the <laughs> back. You know, they were deleted because they didn't need them. And oh, Christ, so I'll have to get some of them, but I ended up putting leather in it anyway. But... There now, you see, the funny thing with them is, a bit like the Series 1 Turbo non-customs, people will pay a premium now for a non-custom Series 1 because they're rare. The Escort Cosy Motorsports, at one point, nobody wanted them. They were frowned upon, oh, he's got no sun, he's got no this. I would think now that an Escort Cosy Motorsport is that rare, yeah. probably worth as much, if not more, than a, than a, a, Lux, um, a Lux Escort Cosy. What do you think that one that's got 700 miles will do? Ah, that's a nice car, that, isn't yeah, it? Is, yeah, But what would you do with it? Because it's too nice to go and rally, Yeah. but would you want to drive it every day on the road? No. So it's only ever going to go into a collection Collector. where that's, someone yeah. looks at it. Yeah, so it in, will be. It's almost a pointless car to a certain extent unless you specifically want to put it in your showroom and use it just to look at because you could never nice, rally something like that no but it's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, it is i still have it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is nice is that i don't know that could be one of them cars i, I can't remember what the estimate is on it hundred is it 120 250 something like that and you look at that car and you think is it worth that money no not really but it's worth a lot, a hell of a lot more isn't it yeah, i, I where think where do you find another one it must be the last one that's yeah, and that, that was a perfect example of the Motorsport Edition. That mm -hmm. car was built on a Motorsport Escort mm -hmm. Cosworth. So somebody will have gone to Ford, bought a white Motorsport Escort Cosworth, and then put the roll cage and everything in it and, and converted it to a rally car. But I, I don't know, I've got a feeling, well, like anything in auction, you get them two people that want it. I yeah. think two collectors will want that car. I think from what I'd seen, the guy who bought it, that had it sent over, got the car maybe used it once or twice a little bit of testing at that point the evos were coming out with the fancy diffs and all the rest of it yeah, which is what everybody then wanted to move over to exactly. so that kind of just got left left behind yeah it did unfortunately yeah. ford didn't really bother did they you know everybody else was active this and active that and, and the ford their lead as it were in motorsport just suddenly got absolutely hammered by the japanese who were investing huge amounts of money into modern technology and Ford didn't really care for it so they didn't bother but I think that I don't know I'd like I'd, I'd put a stab on 200 plus for that car yeah I think if a couple of people are, that like I like it I think yeah. it's great lovely yeah. piece of thing to have would I pay 200 for it no but I think there's plenty of people out there that will so yeah. it'll be interesting it's a nice thing to have isn't it, really? it is, yeah. especially if you've got a road going version as well and you can put the two together which is lovely isn't it? you know we've got the touring cars it, you know, when you when you can sit a, a touring car or a, a rally car next to a road car, 
it just tells you really where these have been, what they were built for. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, these were built for racing, weren't they? No yeah. other reason. That was that was built for touring car racing. That was built for rallying. Yeah, they didn't really use them so much for circuit, did they? No. I think there were, did Wolf build one or two that they went touring did, car racing with? There was a few built, but... successful, I don't know. No, they weren't. The problem was, obviously, Group A was becoming to the end of its life by the time this had been brought out. So this sort of came out far too late. The Nissan Skylines had already been developed, you know, massive horsepower, we'll leave these for dead. So there is a few, very, very few. Dave Brody built a Sapphire Cosy um, touring car. Um, that was, na was it naturally aspirated, that? Yeah, it was. The red yeah. shell one? Black. Black one. No, it was a black one that Dave built. Um, and Dave could pedal a car, to be fair. So if anybody was going to have any success in a, a later a car, it would be him, but... It just what they just weren't there. It wasn't there. Now, of course, everybody then gone on to the Super Tour era, mm -hmm. where where basically rule book they want one, was there? Yeah, I mean, if you to build them into a Super Tour, there'd be nothing left of no pointless. Time. You'd end yeah. up doing what Ford had already yeah. done, which yeah. is unpick all the welding <laughs> yeah, to drop the again. floor pans out yeah. to make it a successful touring car. So they just never bothered, which is a shame because I believe my opinion is the Escort cause it was the last of the proper. The proper RSs, yeah. Mm. The, the focuses are nice and what I mean. I'm not slagging them off, but completely yeah. different, though, aren't they? Because I don't yeah. think they're one-off body shells, are they? No. I think you can reshell an RS even oh, though it's The Mark II, the Mark II has got flared arches, hasn't it? Yeah, but the actual underneath the arches, you take the quarters off it. Whereas this has got a completely different floor yeah, pan yeah. and everything. I think they're pretty pretty similar, aren't they? Even the Mark III, that's four before. Yeah. I think it maybe uses like. Um, like a Puma back axle or something. Yeah, like that. that's what they do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. You yeah. can get the back axle out of a Puma and put it in a Focus yeah. and make it, make it gear wheel drive. Yeah. I'm sorry, four wheel drive. <laughs> but but yeah. yeah, that's it, I think. I can't think of anything else majorly the difference, but, you know, they come a long way, didn't they, in a few years when you look at that, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Um, incredibly different cars, but with, to the untrained eye, you lift that bonnet and look at that and look at that. Unless you really know what you're looking for, they look identical. They do, yeah. So you'll you'll probably rock cover on that, you won't really notice the difference. No, no, you wouldn't. No, you'd even all you look all your turrets <laughs> and things are exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. So uh, quite a clever thing. Airbox location, everything's very, yeah. very similar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that one kind of rounds up that. I think so, man. I don't think there's anything else again unless we start talking nuts, bolts and washers. Yeah. Um, how much engine were, oil do they both hold? You are. How much engine oil do they both hold? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The same. <laughs> Four liters. Yeah. yeah. So that's it, guys. Well, we hope you find that a little bit interesting. It, like I said, we've only just touched on. I think the real major thing with that car is the body shell. The fact that it was two shells welded together um, by a manufacturer that made it quite special. So now you're studying one of each, in front of one of each. Which is your favourite? For me, it's that one. It's, uh, I mean, I'm a, you cut me in half and I say three door RS500, yeah. don't I? But I do love this car. There's just something about that car. It is, I've always liked the Escort courses, but if I'm honest, if you drive them, the three door, this two wheel drive Sapphire Cosy is the best driving Cosy by a million miles. There's just something about a two wheel drive Sap that drives lovely. They're, they're just great. They're, them, the three door. Then the four before SAF, then the Escort Cosworth. And I, I, do, apart. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what it is. The Escort just doesn't drive as nice as, as, as its earlier models. And it should, in theory, drive better. Same floor pan, shorter. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably the plaggy interior that rattles and squeaks and clunks and, and the gearing on the, on the four befores. It's always droning, you're always down the gearbox, but. That's my opinion. I'm sure there's plenty of people who'd rather have that than a... <laughs> I'll wait for the comments to explode. Yeah, <laughs> well, you don't know what you're talking about, Sonny. <laughs> but yeah, all great cars. It's always like everything. It's opinionated, isn't it? But yeah, right. that's our, our little chat. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for watching. Yeah. Drop us a comment. Let us know your opinion. But only drop us nice comments, Tell Paul is wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for watching. And um, keep a lookout for the next video.